Yes, yeah, so I suppose I feel a little bit not sure in a way about what to say about the place because it's something that's just evolved from Stephen and I thinking we just wanted a room to see if we could be creative because neither of us think we are, I suppose, like a lot of people as well. You know, you don't think you're creative. I'm not creative. Well, you see, after a year and a half here, I disagree because everybody who walks in here says I'm not creative and you've only got to look around at what people actually create. You know that Keith on um, the pottery, Great Pottery throw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw down. I know I always laugh when he cries, but I kind of get it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, even now, thinking about it, sometimes people do something and it does, it just brings tears to my eyes because it, it's all that therapeutic side for me, I think, that's yeah. come out over the last few years. What people do, what they bring, how they speak when they're doing pottery, how they talk to each other, the kinds of things they talk about are just different, I think, than a lot of other mediums, in a way. There's something safe about handling pottery, handling clay, that's on some level, it seems to make a lot of us, not everybody, of course, but a lot of us just feel comfortable. I think so, and in a way that's not as scary as, say, painting or drawing, because if you're faced with a blank piece of paper, most of us go, oh, shit, what am I going to put on there? Whereas if we're faced with a lump of clay, it's like we're kids on the beach or in the garden playing with mud and slugs and earwigs and it's kind of on that level in a way for people. So that fear, I think, is a different kind of fear and less about people being creative. Um, and so I, think, I feel like we're more of a facilitator here, you know, encouraging and facilitating people to do because I can't teach Stephen how to do his sculptures. I can say this is, you know, I can try and encourage him a bit or say what I like, but really none of that's any of my business and it doesn't really matter, you know. So I don't know how we do encourage people. I kind of hope we do. Um, but I do see it more as that, as facilitating people's natural kind of whatever they've got within them to make, as opposed to us teaching them how to make something in particular. Because there's kind of no fun or joy in that you know, coming along and making tiles, because I can show you how to make tiles, or I can show you how to throw on the wheel or something. You know, there's some nice things about some of that, but really getting down and letting people feel confident enough, I suppose, to pick up a piece of clay and have a go at making that into something that is theirs. That's what we see on these shelves every day. And I tell you, the amount of people we have coming in, I'm trying not to swear as I'm speaking because I swear all the time. <laughs> I'm doing really well. Um, but the amount of people who come in and look at stuff, and it's not mine or Stephen's work they pick up and want to buy. You know, we've just had somebody come in who wants to buy that little orange penguin at the back there. <laughs> and you can guarantee every day somebody will come in and they'll pick up something and they'll want to buy what somebody's made. And that is so nice. I've already rang Darren. And uh, Darren's gone, no, sell it, I'll make another one. <laughs> but it's really nice for people to hear as well, I think, that somebody's liked something they've made so much that they're willing to put their hands in the pockets. I mean, how much he's got to come back, do you know what I mean? He might come back and say a fiver and whatever, we don't know, but that's not really the point, is it? It's, you know, it, it's, it's just that interest and that connection, I think, that people get from it.